All right, so today I'm here with my friend and business partner, Mr. Julian Coleman. Uh, Mr. Coleman is the owner of a number of businesses. Uh, one in particular is where uh, the Your Service Company, which is on his hat and his bash there. Uh, and Mr. Julian, uh, we're thankful to have you uh, do this interview for us. This is for the kids here in the city of Milwaukee, as well as uh, youth and young adults around the world. So we're just gonna ask a few questions and hopefully they can follow in some of your footsteps. Uh, so give us your first and last name again. Again, it's Julian Coleman, um, born here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay, very good, very good. And what middle school did you go to? Hartford Avenue. Okay. Um, I, was, uh, I was privileged to go through a K through eight uh, school, which is on UWM's campus. Uh, it is a public school and it was a communication arts school at the time uh, in the early and mid 80s. Uh, and it's still a very good school in the middle of uh, UWM's campus. Great. So I have a lot of childhood and lifelong friends because we were there nine years together. Very good. And then do you uh, play any sports, any activities when you were a kid in, in uh, K through eight? Um, I was a basketball player, but I didn't really touch the basketball until I was like 12. So I guess initially just just an average kid running right. through the snow and uh, being athletic. Uh, Nothing in particular. Okay. No real. Uh, I played the cello okay. uh, as a special interest uh, that I played at, in high school, middle school or in, in elementary school. Um, but again, we focused more on writing. That was the skill. Writing, reading, uh, arithmetic. It was a, it was a really big uh, education hub. Okay. Okay. Very good. So your extracurricular activities. You said cello. You uh, you played that through middle school. Correct. Okay. It's excellent. And then what high school did you choose? Yeah. Um, so I went to uh, Milwaukee Tech and Trade. Uh, I'm a Trojan, representing uh, Milwaukee Tech. Shouts out to Bradley Tech. Shouts out to Boys Tech. Um, uh, class of uh, 98, initially. Uh, they bumped me up to class of 97, but I chose to graduate with my uh, original class. That's what's up. That's what's up. And then there, uh, any sports, any extracurricular activities in high school? I did play varsity uh, basketball, um, uh, but primarily I focused on plumbing shop. I uh, completed the, uh, the five-year plumbing program in four years at Tech, so... Um, the, the true the true extracurricular activity was you know taking on the trade and taking uh, school serious. We played basketball in the morning. Uh, the plumbing shop had a basketball uh, program that uh, we would meet up every morning at six in the morning, and ultimately proved to be a very good vetting tool for those that are serious about just waking up and handling business every morning. So. Very good, very good. All right, so it sounds like you got into the trade, uh, plumbing in particular, in high school, uh, which is excellent. You started, uh, did you have internships? Did you go right into trade school after that? Right, I, I, I pursued plumbing since I was nine years old. Uh, before that, I wanted to be a race car driver, um, a Formula One race car driver. And actually, it took me about 36 years of life to realize, like, why did I even want to be a race car driver? Because my mom bought me an Atari 7200, and it came with a game called Pole Position 2. So I, I, now I kind of recognize the, the, how strong uh, the influence of um, video games are in child decision making. So, um, and they, they had places like Monaco, it had four different tracks you could play on Monaco. And I, those are actually one of the places I want to travel now today because of, those, uh, because of that exposure to the video game. But regardless, um, I, wanted to work, I wanted to be a race car driver, I wanted to be an auto mechanic. And uh, after that I chose uh, plumbing, a uh, couple uh, uh, family members, close family members or, or in the plumbing industry. And, uh, and I enjoy working with my hands. Even though I was groomed to be doctor lawyer, uh, I enjoy working with my hands and I saw the opportunity that, uh, that uh, afforded me with the uh, plumbing apprenticeship. So uh, the apprenticeship program is a five-year program. I wasn't able to start that until I was 18 years old and uh, I completed it at 23. Very and good. then uh, there's another three years required after that to become a master plumber. And I did that at uh, by 25 and a half or so. And uh, uh, I was the youngest master plumber in the state of Wisconsin and in state history of, of a five-year apprenticeship because uh, at one point apprenticeships were four years and I think my friend uh, Robert has that has that uh, that credential for a four-year apprenticeship but I'm the youngest of a five-year very good very good okay so then uh, apprenticeship you became a master plumber a certified uh, a master plumber uh, then what you said okay I'm starting my own business or you work for someone so actually I started my business before I even took on my master's uh, I just wrote I think it was even before I even wrote my journeyman's. I started Diamond Plumbing. Actually, I started, yeah, I started right after I got a journeyman. Uh, my journeyman credential, which is in 2003. Uh, me and uh, my master plumber's son started an organization named Diamond Plumbing. Um, shouts out to Val Vaughn at A&A Plumbing. Those are my that's my mentor, Val Anderson, his son, Vaughn Anderson. 
Uh, and uh, I was also trained by Vernon Anderson, who's uh, rest, in, rest in peace, uh, passed, since passed, but he was uh, Val's oldest son as well. So they were always very, very good and very, very, uh, you know, good natured individuals to me. Uh, as an only child of a single parent, uh, grown, coming out of Berry Land, shouts out to Berry Land. And uh, I grew up on 14th and Clark until I was about nine. Then we moved to Berry Land from nine to 17, 18, until I got kicked out. That's a whole other story. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, it sounds like you uh, definitely kept yourself on your feet, and, and now you're running a successful plumbing business here in the city of Milwaukee and elsewhere? Yeah, definitely. Uh, credentialed in uh, multiple states, uh, Colorado, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, and uh, we have a branch that we're, we're building over in the Texas market. Uh, just been blessed. I would have never guessed that uh, the, the plumbing uh, trade affords you so much opportunity. You are going to have to work, and it is not going to be easy, but it, is, it, is, it will be worth it. Very good, very good. But this is excellent. So what are your goals now, Mr. Coleman? Well, the key is I uh, focus on training. I was involved in an accident at 17. Uh, kind of limited my mobility, but it doesn't stop me from still being able to produce. I think that's one of the things that you have to ingrain in yourself at a, at a young age is that um, nothing can stop anyone that has a vision or a passion, um, whether uh, you know lim capabilities and lim limitations are all in your head. Uh, you can do whatever it is that you want to do as long as you put yourself to it and, and of course, rely on faith. So um, I move forward. I move forward. Now it's about training the next generation. Uh, while at the same time, I do get out in the field just to keep things, uh, to see what it is that the new generation is, the challenges that they're facing as well. So Very good. All right, well, this is excellent. So if you can give any advice to a young person that may want to travel, follow the suit uh, that you have uh, to become a master plumber and get into this industry, uh, what would you give them in some? The first thing I'll say is um, you have to start by shadowing. Uh, so... Um, not everything is going to be about money. I think that most people are going to say, what can, I, what can you do for me? The key is you want to start by volunteering. Uh, see if you can volunteer your efforts. You know, uh, I had to start off as a shop kid, uh, organizing fittings. Uh, I, was, I was at the libraries at you know, 12 years old reading books about what plumbing is. And um, also, you know, introducing myself. You, you have to work on your character. Uh, the plumbing part is going to come. The, the, the actual mechanical part is going to come over time. But like anything else, um, and again, I look at plumbing, uh, electricians, uh, carpenters, uh, steam fitters. They're, they're nothing more than professional athletes. If you produce, um, there's a lot of guys out there that can hoop, but the superstars have the full package. They can speak, they can hoop, they know how to, uh, they know how to be respectful. They're true role models. And it's the same thing in the trades. Um, work harder on yourself than you work on your business. Work harder on yourself than you're working on the trade. And um, if you keep on working on yourself, uh, you'll never be able to, you'll never, you'll never go in the wrong direction. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Coleman, for enlightening us and giving us this nugget. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you soon in the future. All right, sounds good. Thank you.